All right, today we are in study 15 of our study in the letter to the Philippians, and today we're going to begin chapter 4. We're going to be looking at verse 1 to 5, but before we do that, we're going to answer the questions that we had for the end of chapter 3, verse 18 to 21. Now, the first question was basically to describe the enemies of the cross of Christ, and remember, it was in comparison to the commandments of chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. So here's the answer. Uh, it says their God is their belly, their glory is their shame, and their minds are set on earthly things. These enemies of the cross are also mentioned, remember, in chapter 1, verse 15, and verse 17, and verse 28, and in chapter 3, verse 2. Uh, they're only interested in their own desires. Uh, they're er interested in earthly things. Uh, chapter 2, verse 1 to 4, challenges us to no longer just live for our own selfish desires and goals, but actually to selflessly care for and serve others. Uh, no longer to have our minds set on earthly things, but on the things of Christ. These men, these enemies of the cross, can't live this way. Uh, they can't live this way because Christ is not living in them, and therefore he's not working out his life and his fruit of righteousness in them. God has not begun a good work in them, chapter 1, verse 6. He isn't working in them mightily, chapter 2, verse 13. And so they have nothing to work out of them except for their own selfish ambitions and desires. The second question was to do with their destiny then, uh, their future. And it says their end is destruction. And you'll see that also in chapter 1, verse 28. The third question then was the future of those who are believers in Christ. And it says in these verses that our, our citizenship is in heaven and we are eagerly waiting for the return of Jesus Christ. I remember one day, it says in chapter 2, verse 10 to 11, that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. And when he returns, he will transform our bodies to be like his. This means that God will complete the good work that he has begun in us. Chapter 1, verse 6. Paul then, and our great desire will be finally accomplished. We will be like Christ. Within us, there'll be nothing that causes selfishness or worry or conflict ever again. And this is the promised future of all those who are in Christ. So we're going on now to chapter 4. We're looking at verse 1 to 5. And uh, Paul has just told us that Christ is coming again to finish the good work that God has begun in us and is continuing in us right now. But one day he'll finish that. And he wants us to live in light of all of this, that God has begun it, that God is continuing it, and that one day God will complete it at the return of Christ when he transforms us. He wants us to live in light of that. And chapter one to f or chapter 4, verse 1 to 5, is basically Paul saying, live in light of this. So here are the questions. Question 1, how do we live in light of this in verse 1? Question 2, how do we live in light of this in verse 2 to 3? And question 3 how do we live in light of this in verse four to five? So really, how do we live in light of the fact that God has begun a good work, uh, is doing a good work, and will complete that good work when we see Jesus? God bless.